Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about finding the magic in your life again. So one of the patterns I've noticed over the last year and a half is that a lot of people um, who are sensitive or empaths have been writing to me or I, I notice you generally write maybe in the comments and all that you've all been feeling really, really down and it's like you're absorbing the energies of the world or you're affected by the energies of other people and the things that are going on. So I want to give you some tips today on how to find that magic in your life again. Because here's the thing, if you are somebody who is super sensitive, who is intuitive, who is an empath, I want to remind you that you are a sixth sensory being. What does that mean? That means that your intuition, your sixth sense, um, the part of you that is non-physical is every bit as alive and strong as the physical part of you. But, but because you ignore it and you put it aside and you only live as though you are a five sensory being, that's when you start to lose yourself and you start to become depressed and low and unhappy. And then you may even find that you develop um, physical manifestation, physical illnesses or disease as a result of ignoring that bigger part of you, that sixth sensory part of you. You have to honor that part of you. I want you to start realizing that you have not embraced your full sixth sensory self and that's why you start to feel low. It's because you've got caught up in the minutia of a five sensory world that is not even aware that there is more out there than this five sensory three-dimensional reality. Once you start to once you start to see through this veil, which is actually very natural for you when you allow it, then you start to pick up and become happy again and, and things start to fall into place for you and even your health improves. But what happens is because we are empaths and we're sensitive to the people around us, we buy into this illusion of that that is only a three-dimensional physical reality. And so we start buying into all the statistics and we start thinking, oh my God, this could happen to me and I could be next. And, and, uh, and we start living as though we are just a statistic, as though we are just reacting to life as opposed to living back in that space where we know we are a part of the creation of life. When you were born, when you came into this world, when you came from spirit, you came here with a purpose, knowing that you are part of co-creating your life, you're part of creation, and you have a huge impact on your own life. You can choose so much of your life, but you fall into the marinade of your surroundings, you know, including um, people around you who are naysayers or even the way our education system is set up or the news making you feel that these things happen and it's a dangerous world out there and everything is random and we start buying into that. I want to remind you that that is not the way to live and I want to remind you to find the magic in your life again. And I'm going to give you some examples of how that works. Um, so first of all, it means retraining your mind. Retrain your mind to stop focusing on all the, um, all the five sensory, three dimensional fear based. If something is fear based, it's very five sensory, three dimensional. If you're just being told, oh, this is your prognosis, or these are the facts and figures, or this is what's happening out in the world outside and you could be next. Those are all fear-based stuff, and they lower your energy. And when your energy is lower, and you become, you start to live more from this fear-based place, it becomes harder and harder to actually get access to the magic. But you can shift that very, very easily. Start to notice things. Start to notice angel numbers that pop up for you. For me, every time I look at a clock, it seems to be a number like, 444, like 444, or 1111, and numbers like that. Um, I feel that they, it's, it's like they're prompting me, they're tapping me on the shoulder to say, look at the clock now, and I look and it's like, oh, okay, that's your message to me that you are around me. 
The other thing that happens a lot for me is um, monarch butterflies show up. For me, monarch butterflies signal that Wayne Dyer is around and elephants. Now, of course, I'm not going to see real live elephants on the street. And oh my God, if I did that, would, I, I would video that and I would be on here live right away and say, guys, look, 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 there's a real elephant out on my street. Okay, that hasn't happened yet. But what does happen regularly is that I see images of elephants where they shouldn't be, like there'll be graffiti of an elephant um, and, and things like that popping up for me. But monarch butterflies, you know, um, uh, just this morning when Abby, who is behind the camera right now or behind my iPhone right now, um, Abby was walking towards my front door, she said there was a monarch butterfly right outside my front door that went flew right past her. I think it's the same one that's been showing up for me almost every day in my little garden. And he showed up, he or she showed up a couple of weeks ago when we were videoing a Facebook Live. And she or he has been hanging around ever since. I see a lot of monarch butterflies, and I mean a lot. And the other day I was talking to one of my neighbors and I said, there are a lot of monarch butterflies in our area, aren't they? And she said, there are, I haven't noticed any. And so I was like smiling to myself thinking, okay, that's a sign for me then. So it's things like that. You, it, it's a matter of reconditioning the way you look at the world and building that trust or that faith again that you are something more, that your soul has a purpose. And I keep popping up and reminding this to you because I want you to know that you can create a different life for yourself. Um, and, and I want you to know that even the way, not just the way you look at life, that it is actually the way you look at life, but in relation to everything that's going on for you, if you're struggling in relationships, if you're struggling with your health, all these things, there is a different way to look at things. Um, one of the things that I realized is that even my challenges are trying to tell me something. They are a gift. Earlier last year, I became completely burned out from overdoing things, like completely burned out. And I was like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? Of course, that's always the initial reaction. And then I switched it to, okay, why is this happening for me? And I start communicating with my body and my body started to tell me where I had been saying yes, when I should have said no. And then I started to attract the most amazing healers who have now become, uh, who I've become friends with today and who I know that when I eventually create a, the sanctuary, which is my dream to create a real brick and mortar sanctuary, a physical place where people who are empaths and sensitive, who are suffering physical disease, where they come for their healing. Because I believe that if you're an empath and you have physical illnesses, they are definitely because of energies and emotions. Uh, and they can, and I believe, I truly believe that everything, every illness can be reversed. Um, and I tell people you can reverse anything as long as you are not actually looking for, a, for an overnight miracle healing. Everything can be reversed as you start to turn inward and communicate with your body. And you can make a 1% change or a 1% improvement every single day until you get to full healing. But it means talking to your body. It means changing your life around. It means finding the magic in life. And it means surrounding yourself in a community and an environment of people who feel the same way you do. Not people who are naysayers, not people who are going to say, oh, that's all delusional woo-woo and make you feel sh ashamed for feeling that way. No. I know that for me, knowing that I live in a magical universe and believing in a magical life is what keeps me healthy, happy, strong, and it also keeps the magic coming. That's the best part. So why would I want to stop thinking this way? And let me give you an example of something that happened just a couple in, in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, less than a couple of weeks. So about 10 days ago, um, I was 
walking through this store in, um, in, in not too far from where I live in Redondo Beach, Southern California. And uh, I was walking through the store called Psychic Eye and it was evening and I was with my friend Kareen and we were just, we were just in there just after dinner, um, just decided to browse for no reason other than just to see what they had. And, uh, and then there was this, this drum, this drum here, that literally called me. So this is about 10 days ago. It literally called me. It was like, play me. And I, you know, sometimes that happens to me where things just call out to me. So I started playing it. And, and my friend Kareen said, oh my gosh, that, that drum really plays well on you. And, um, and so I just had to get it. And I got it and I brought it home. And I want to tell you that on that day, for some reason, my energy was a little bit low. I don't know why it was a little bit low. I think some things had drained me. Nothing major. But um, when I started drumming in that store that evening, my friend Kareem was like, that's doing something to you. Your energy looks better. It's like your face is fuller and smilier when you play it. And I said, you know, you're right. It's weird. So I bought it, I brought it home, and the next day I was just drumming. And then um, I started to notice that it was actually uplifting my energy. And, and this is the thing, be sensitive to things that are uplifting your energy, because energy is a real thing. Don't dismiss it. Energy is a real thing. The higher your energy, the, the more likely you are to feel better and the less likely you are to attract illnesses or, or the less likely your body is to break down. So I noticed that, wow, this is actually doing something. I don't know if it's the act of drumming or is it the sound? Is it changing my vibration, um, my energy vibration? But whatever it is, I'm actually feeling good. So I was like playing with this drum. Uh, I, I like to do it with two hands, but um, I kind of, but when I put it down, it doesn't sound as good as when I hold it up. But anyway, um, the next day or the following day, Abby came over and, uh, and, I, and I showed her the drum. And she said, oh, if you like drumming, she said to me that she bought her fiancé um, something called a, um, a Kosmoski a tank drum or steel drum. Uh, and it's a tongue drum. And so she started to tell me about it. And she said, you would probably love one of those. And we looked on the website and I was like, oh my God, they're beautiful. And I started to look, look at some of the videos and I, and I started to think, I need to have one of those. So I looked up tongue drums in general and there were different brands. And Abby said to me, you have to get the Kosmoski brand if you're gonna get it. They are artisan, they're handmade, they're made in Russia, and they ship it to you and, and, and so on, and their designs are beautiful. So I thought, okay, this is great. She said she researched it for months because her fiance is a drummer and she wanted to get him a really special one. And she would researched it and found Kosmoski is the best brand. So I thought, okay, that's great. You saved me months of research. I'm going to home in on just Kosmoski brand of this type of drum. And the sound was angelic. And so um, I started looking on the Kosmoski website. I spent a couple of days looking. And there were so many different ones. And they were beautiful. And the artwork on them were beautiful. And they were all handmade and unique. And I thought, wow, it's so hard to choose. Because um, they charge a fortune even just to ship it. And I thought, I wouldn't want to order one and have it shipped and have it not be exactly, sound exactly the way I love it. And I was just thinking to myself, I wish there was a place where I could just go and try them and try the different sounds. And I didn't think that was likely because there isn't a store. I looked, the site is mostly in Russian, but a lot of it is translated into English. But it's not catered for, um, like, I, I couldn't find any store in America that sells it. So I let it go. I just let it go thinking I will come back to it and I will order a drum. I let it go and then, um, the, and then literally the next day, my friend Kareen said, hey, do you want to go and look at this place 
um, South Bay South Bay Salts. Um, it's this beautiful couple that sell crystals, and uh, they and and they've got some new crystal wands. And I'm going to go over and look at them. Do you want to come with me? And I said, sure, I would love to. So we went over there, and this beautiful couple, um, uh, uh, Alex and Diana, who uh, who import or bring in all these crystals from all over the world. And we went there specifically to look at crystal wands. And so I'm looking at the wands. And then suddenly, um, and, and Danny was with me. And then suddenly, Di Diana says to my friend Corrine, do you think Anita's husband Danny would like to look at drums? And, uh, and Corrine says, oh, I don't know about Danny, but I know Anita recently found she resonated with drums. Maybe ask her. And, I, and Diana goes, We've got this new shipment of a whole bunch of Kosmoski unique artisan drums in, and so I thought I would show them to you guys. And Kareem was like, I have no idea what those are. I don't even know what Kosmoski is. But my ears perked up. I said, did you say Kosmoski? I, I couldn't believe it. I said, did you say Kosmoski? And she goes, yeah, you know what those are? I said, yes, I know what those are. I wanted one. So she brought out this whole array of Kosmoski drums, and I was like, oh my god, universe, thank you. Um, so I was able to try them, the different kinds, in the different keys. And as I played them, there was one that just said, take me home, this is mine. And this is the thing with me, what's happened is when you get into this space of knowing that you are more than a physical being, that non-physical part of you communicates with the world and then it tells you this is yours this is yours this is, it's not me saying oh I gotta go out and get this oh I need to get it's not that it's the universe it feels like the universe is saying to you here this is yours this is for you that's what shifts when you get into back into seeing the magic of life it's the universe saying this is yours that first drum just called out to me saying, I am yours. When I was there at beautiful um, Diana and Alex's place, and there were all these drums, and some of them were more pleasing to the eye than others. Like if I didn't hear how they sounded, and if I was looking on the website, I would have chosen one of the ones that has a beautiful ohm in the middle or a mermaid. But the thing is when I played them, I knew which one was mine. It literally called out to me. And this, this is the one that I actually chose. And I absolutely love it. I'm going to use it in, um, when I do my guided journeys with my audience. And so it's so, so it's, um, I, I, I just still can't believe how it just happened the way I wanted it to. And so the thing is, one of the keys to seeing the magic in life and in the world around you, oh, and by the way, if you have questions, I would love to hear from you. Um, Abby will shout out the questions. But one of the keys is to not be desperate about it. So I don't do vision boards and things like that because when I do things like that and I don't meditate on something and say, oh, I've got to meditate on my healing. I've got to meditate on having this or on my relationship or my job because what happens is that that creates in me a kind of a desperation and a desperation comes from a place of lack and then that keeps your energy at a place of lack. It's more like let it go as though if it's meant to be yours, it will be. And then do whatever you can to just honor and uplift yourself and love yourself more and make an assumption that the universe is working in your favor. So if I have to give you a few um, key guidelines, one is that if you have a desire, if you want something, let it go and know the universe will present it to you if it's meant to be yours and it will give it to you in such a magical way. The, Biggest thing, the second thing, but that should, this should actually be the first thing, is always, always, always do what uplifts you. Always do what uplifts you, whatever it is. Because the more you uplift yourself, the more your energy is reaching out to the universe 
and pulling in what you need to support you. But when your energy is all the way down here because you're buying into all the fear-based messages, your energy doesn't have that opportunity. It's constricted. It's small. It, it's not able to reach out into the world and bring you the gifts and bring you the healing. It's about making your energy unbounded as opposed to bounded. When we start thinking like, oh my God, the world is a dangerous place, or um, the, look, listen to the facts and figures, and I'm going to be the next one to get COVID. And when you start getting into that and start believing that that is reality and that is life and stay in that fearful place, what you're doing is you're bounding up your energy. And, and the thing is, I know there are a lot of people in that space, and, and so I want people to know that you don't have to be in that space because that being in that bounded space attracts more of that. And so we are actually, we are actually um, magnifying that or multiplying that for the people around us when we do that. But if you can work at unbounding your own energy, and the way to do that, as I said, is to love yourself more, do things that uplift you, um, expand your energy. If you're going through physical challenge, talk to your body and say, what is your lesson for me? Don't say, oh, why did I get sick? Why did this happen? And, you know, and if you're feeling fear, don't fear the fear. That's the other thing. Don't fear the fear. Say, Oh, fear, what are you trying to tell me? How can I reverse you? Um, and speak to your body. Body, what are you trying to tell me? When I think of uh, the time that I was really sick, even though I was struggling at the time, it is the biggest gift that life could have given me. Even a year and a half ago, at the beginning of the year, when I was completely burned out at the beginning of 2020, that, is also, that was also a huge gift. I met so many amazing people who now help me with my dreams of, even with my online sanctuary, and they will help me with my physical sanctuary. So ask your body if you're going through physical challenges, what are you trying to tell me? If you're going through other kinds of challenges, financial challenges, relationship challenges, you can always ask, ask your soul, what is the lesson here? What do I need to let go of? How can I move on from this? And just let it go, and just, and all the while, do things that uplift your energy all the while and train your mind to look for ma magic. Do not dismiss the signs. When you see the signs that are unique to you, mine are repetitive numbers, monarch butterflies, hummingbirds. Some people say for them it's dragonflies or you know, whatever it is for you, you will know what those signs are. Don't dismiss them. Don't say it's a coincidence because you want to start training your mind. Because here's the thing, the more you train your mind to notice the signs, the more signs will appear and you will realize, oh my gosh, this is not a coincidence. But when you dismiss it, you stop seeing them. And then you're kind of like, oh, why do these signs never happen to me? Oh, that was just a coincidence. Why can't I have a big sign that just, that's just like tells me that, oh my gosh, the, this is no way a, a coincidence. That's because your mind is not open to receiving it. So slowly open your mind to not dismiss all the little things that you once thought were coincidences. Train your mind to do that and you'll be training your mind for the big ones where it's kind of like, wow, this is not a coincidence. A couple of days ago I drew a card out of an oral, oracle deck and, and then I was like, huh, this is a really good card, okay. And I put it back and I thought, let me draw another one. Same card. And I was like, whoa, that's really a sign. What are the chances? Okay, put it back and I thought, um, let me get one more just for clarification. Third card, same one again, three times in a row. And I was like, okay, no more. I got the message. Um, so things like that will start happening to you more and more. But surround yourself with information and a community of like-minded people. Uh, read books that support this way of thinking, not the fear-based way of thinking. Stop watching the news if it triggers fear in you and if it brings you back down into that limited, bounded way of thinking and feeling. Um, so because I feel it's so important 
to be in a marinade of like-minded people and to watch the right kind of videos and get the right kind of inspiration and, and, and so on to really feel the magic. Um, that's why I created an online sanctuary. And the good news is that we have reopened it today for membership. Um, we were putting in a lot of improvements and things over the last few months. So today we have reopened it for membership. And, uh, and so anyway, the link, we're, we're going to include the link in this video. If you're interested in just checking it out and seeing what's it, what it's about, please click on the link and, and uh, pop it and just take a look at what it is. It is a membership platform, um, but it is somewhere where I do put in a lot of uh, videos, live videos and interactive videos where I get to chat with my members. Uh, and we have a forum where members can communicate with each other and we do do courses and all kinds of things. All of these, everything, everything is so that empaths and sensitive people can really start to make an impact in their own lives and in the world if they would like to. But it really is about starting to see magic in your own life so that you can start to shift the world. Um, and uh, Abby, do we have any questions? Um, we have one question, which was someone's getting their first vaccine shot and they were hoping to have any advice on dispelling the fear around side effects. Oh, well, so the, the thing is, I want you to know that your body is really, really powerful, really powerful. And uh, I and, and to me, it doesn't matter whether uh, people choose to get vaccinated or not get vaccinated. The thing you need to know is that your body is really powerful and know that and focus on that and your body can handle anything. Your body can handle COVID, your body can handle vaccines. Um, I, when, I had, when I had cancer, I had this huge fear of chemotherapy. I had this huge fear of chemotherapy and I had this huge fear of cancer. When I crossed over to the other side, when I died, so I say this coming from an experience of being on the other side, I realized that the biggest determining factor of my, for my life is, was my energy state and how I felt about myself and how I expanded my energy. It didn't matter if my body had chemotherapy or not. It didn't need it, but I, but I had chemotherapy, but I was very afraid that because I'd heard about um, I'd heard stuff about that chemotherapy actually causes the cancer to come back and uh, and people were also telling me if I don't take chemotherapy I would die if I don't take it I was crazy not to so I was getting all these mixed messages and I'm guessing that the person who asked the question is also getting these mixed messages and that's who my answer is directed to is people who are getting these mixed messages if you're clear you want the vaccine great get it if you're clear you don't want the vaccine great but for the people who are getting mixed messages and confused follow what your heart feels and believe in yourself and know that your body can handle anything it really can the biggest thing the biggest thing is your energy state how you feel about yourself and expanding your energy so I realized when I was on the other side that if I had a purpose, if I knew my purpose, if I knew my passion, if I continued to expand my energy state, if I continued to know that I am a sixth sensory being far beyond my body, that neither the cancer nor the chemotherapy was going to kill me. So thank you all so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next week um, or in the sanctuary, wherever. See you all next week. Bye.